excited about my business. I am a Spartan. I graduated from Michigan State. I um, got my undergraduate from there. I'm also a Laker. I went to um, Grand Valley to get my master's degree. And I'm a wife. I'm a mom of three little young kids that keep me busy and don't let me sleep. Um, <laughs> Um, uh, I'm a Grandpa's Business Journal 40 Under 40 recipient. I am a, a recently NPR Moss Storyteller, so something that was new for me I did this summer. And um, I'm also a media junkie. I am a, um, a secret uh, blog reader, a pop culture maven. Like, I love all of it. I love to know what's going on. I love to read the comments, even though I don't post. So <laughs> that is back to who I am. Uh, so to get us started, to just kind of warm up, I want to know more about all of you and just get some of your thoughts on um, your most memorable marketing campaigns that you saw. So I want to know from a couple of you, what are some marketing campaigns that you've seen that you were like, man, that was good or made you want to purchase something? Maybe it was from recent or last year's Super Bowl ads or this year's Super Bowl, right? I'm not a sports person. Super Bowl was in January, right? <laughs> <laughs> so what was the ad that you've seen that you thought, man, that was really good and I think I want to go take a next step? I, I, can, I can speak. It's, it's not so much a company, but a, an influencer. Um, she does, um, she helps wellness entrepreneurs mm -hmm. um, start businesses, mostly digital businesses and I feel like she's talking right to me mm -hmm. every time I hear her speak it's like yes mm -hmm. you know you're in my head right now so I think you know having that ability to really understand your target market and speak right to their their problems and, and desires is something that would attract me to, to make a purchase from somebody yeah I know I get followed a lot, especially on Instagram. So I'm like in the hair care products. So I can be Googling something, next thing I know I see everything. And so, and I am one of those people like, if you sell me the right way, I'm gonna buy. So I buy a lot of things off of Instagram. <laughs> um, but anybody else, anybody else saw something that made you like do a recent purchase, whether it was on social or Google? Or are you all budget conscious and you don't, you don't click? <laughs> And this was like from forever ago, uh -huh. but when I was a kid, I saw a commercial for Kraft cheese, mm -hmm. and it was like this commercial of talking about how we went up to the moon, realized it wasn't cheese, and never went back. <laughs> and for some reason, that commercial has stuck in my mind. It's like just showed like how valuable cheese was <laughs> over these things. And I don't, I don't know why. It's just always, always stuck with me. It was very memorable. That was a good marketing campaign. Mm -hmm. It really was. <laughs> Nice. All right. Well, um, so yeah, I just want, so we're going to talk about a marketing 360 plan, but really look at the new way of marketing. So marketing has changed a lot from what we may have grown up with seeing. Like the, the mass marketing is no longer the same because there's so much content and information coming to us. And there's so many different competitors that are out there. Everyone is starting a business. Entrepreneurship is booming, which is amazing. But that means that that makes the marketplace even more competitive. Um, for us as entrepreneurs to be able to get our message out there. So what is the new way of marketing? Um, the new way of marketing is about communicating value to your clients and your customer. It's about taking that first step to show them that you understand them, that you care about what it is that they need, and is that you're showing them how you can help them, that what you're offering in your product or service or um, or your product or your service, whatever, whatever it is that you're offering that you have what they need. And so really, uh, marketing has evolved into how can we be more targeted, which speaks to what Amanda was saying, is that she felt like somebody that was an influencer was speaking directly to her because it's being very targeted about who you're trying to reach and making sure that you're letting them know that you can solve the problem that they have and you can, you can help them. So we're gonna go through what I like to call a Marketing 360 Master Plan. And I'm gonna walk you through five steps that I find to be effective um, in terms of growing your business, elevating your business through strategic marketing. And some of these things may be things that you heard about. So if you have thoughts or you have comments, feel free to interrupt. Like it's 
I don't want to be too formal, but I'm going to walk you through um, some steps and some activations that I found to be successful, and then we'll have some Q&A at the end. So the first step that I think is very important is defining, defining your value. Thinking about as a, as a business owner, what sets you apart? What makes your products and your services irresistible that someone feels like, I need to get this product, I need to use your service, I need to partner with you? Like I said, there's so many different businesses that are out there. Everyone is selling something, everyone is offering something. And so being able to define what makes you the, the business that somebody needs to, needs to work with is, is really a strategy. It also um, is a strategy around what makes you competitive, like what is your competitive advantage? So if I have so many choices to choose from, what makes me competitive as a business owner? There's so many marketing companies. So I had to think about what makes me different? What do I offer that somebody doesn't? And I know what I offer is, I'm really focused on how do you reach culturally diverse audiences? How do you reach people like more than just, you know, what you're comfortable with, but how do you reach people um, that may be different from like your, your normal everyday life? So that's one of my, you know, competitive advantages that I like to lean into. Um, and then the other question that you have to ask yourself is what makes your brand memorable? Like we were talking about, everybody knows Nike. You you remember Nike from like back in the day, like the check mark. Like that, if you see a check mark, you think Nike before you think done, right? Like it's just what, uh, it's just what, what, what they've done with their brand. And so what, what makes your brand memorable? So I wanna share with you some activations around how do you um, really push your value as a business? So one is creating the uh, compelling value proposition. And it's so important, it seems like, you know, oh, that's easy, but it's so important to be able to succinctly and concisely say, this is who I am, this is what I offer, and be able to say it in a way that you're letting people know, I can solve the problem that you have. And being able to do that um, is, is important when connecting with customers and letting them know that I have what you're looking for. Also, something that's really important, like I was talking about, is the competitive analysis of understanding your competition. A lot of times, it's easy to think, it doesn't matter who my competitors are because I'm the best or I know what I'm offering, but understanding your competition is everything. Understanding what they sell, um, what's their price point, what makes them unique and different and comparing it against yours is everything because then you can start to identify gaps to say, this is what makes me better, especially when you're looking at maybe some of these bigger companies um, or mid-sized companies that maybe got a few more years on you or have a larger audience pool than you and you're coming on the market or you're trying to grow and scale your business, you really got to know who's in your, especially like in West Michigan, right? Who's in West Michigan that's doing what you're doing and how are you different from them? And being able not to communicate it in a way that's not disrespecting the other businesses, but being able to know this is where my value lies. And so doing that competitive analysis, I always recommend that you literally like map it out. You do a, take your Excel spreadsheet and build out your competitive analysis to really understand who's your competition. Um, the other activation around the value is having a consistent branding. And just making sure that your branding is consistent across the board because really what your branding is like, it's like the front door like of your business. It is the thing that's gonna capture people's eyes. And I know we've probably all seen a business probably on online that was promoting their services but then when you go to their website it looks like they made it off of I don't know WordPress or not even WordPress like <laughs> Word document right <laughs> and you're like oh no like your brand doesn't match what you're saying or what you're saying about yourself so like your brand look and feel and just and, and taking the time to make sure you have a cohesive look really is something that like shows your value and it also, if you're a business that is a startup and you're on the come up, the way that you make your, the way that you design your brand and the way that your brand stands out will make somebody think you're bigger than what you actually are just off of the way that you look. So it may get, it'll get you in the front door a lot of times and then you obviously got to sell what you're doing, but just having a strong brand really speaks to the value that you offer as a business. The next one is the market. So the next step is understanding your market, understanding your audience. And like, so I was recently listening to a book um, by Seth Godin 
I think he created during the pandemic and it was called this is marketing and he really dug into the whole idea it's not around reaching everyone but it's about reaching the people who need what you have and being very direct on how you're going to connect with them and so um i'm a really i'm really uh, i really uh lean into the idea of understanding who is your ideal customer like you can't be all things to everybody so who is it that you're trying to reach and um, what are their pain points and their needs? Why, how are you solving this problem for them? And why do they need your services? And being able to articulate that in a way that's relevant for them is, is something that you want to think about as you're building out your marketing plan. Also, um, you also want to think about as you're building out your plan when it comes to the audiences, how does your services um, solve their problems? Because if I'm gonna invest money, if I'm gonna work with someone, it's all about how can you help me? And so you wanna be able to clearly understand what, what it is that your audience needs and how does your product or your service help them. So some activations around that that you can put in your marketing plan is create a detailed customer persona um, sheet that really outlines what's their, what's your, who's your customer, who's your ideal customer, what's their pain point, um, what's their preferences, and really do some deep digging. And I, I like to build this out in the marketing plans that I make for clients is let me just lay this out so that we know this is who this customer is and this is what we know about them. And it's so important because that's really gonna center around how you do your marketing activation once you start to get into tactics. Um, also, it's really helpful to do some data and you don't have to hire somebody to do this big market research study, but just doing some research on your own to understand um, getting insights on that audience. So say you're looking to reach, I'm making this up, but say you're, you're looking to reach boomers who are getting ready to retire and you're selling insurance and you know, they're ready to live their best life. They got, this, you know, disposable income and there's so many different insurance agencies. What am I offering them that's different, right? And so being able to just understand that the boomers today is different from the, our, you know, during our parents' time, right? They're, they're young, they're vibrant, right? And so it's like, what is their needs? How do I reach them? How do I connect with them? And digging deep to understand them will help you be able to build a really strong marketing strategy. And then, you know, with all of this, the more that you know about the audience, the more that you can really target your marketing efforts. So you're not just throwing out everything that you think might, you know, work just because somebody else is doing it, but you're doing tactics that actually is gonna help convert. Cause that's the goal, right? We wanna convert somebody to become one of our clients or our customers or to buy our products and services, right? So that's something that I would really lean into as you're building out your um, strategic marketing plan is digging into who is your customer. The next um, key point is your message. So defining your message. And again, these are things that's like, oh yeah, I know that, but it's really doing the work to get into understanding what is your message. So as you think, so you, 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 you know your value as a business, you understand who your customer is, and then you start to think about what message is really gonna connect with this customer that I'm, this ideal customer that I'm, I'm going after. And a lot of times you have these secondary audiences. So the secondary audience may be impacted by whatever message that you're selling, but really honing in on that, who was that ideal customer that I know that I'm gonna make money off of these individuals? What message do I need to send to them? Um, so thinking about what type of content resonates with them, and then how do you tell your story effectively? So what, you know, again, what's gonna get them from, you know, through the marketing sales funnel that we'll talk about a little later, but like, how do I get them to say, hmm, maybe I should learn more about this company, or oh, maybe, you know, maybe they have something that I need. How do you effectively tell your story? So here's some activations around that, this. One of the things that I always recommend that you put in your marketing plan is to develop a content calendar. You want to have consistently high um, content that's defining, that's addressing the needs of your different audiences. You want to be able to have quality content that um, speaks to their interests, that speaks to their need, and make sure that you have it built out and that it's planned. You also want to do some keyword research. You want to know um, what keywords connects to the industries that you're going after and making sure that you're building that into your content strategy. So as you're writing content to market to, to you know your target audience, you wanna make sure you have those buzzwords that are gonna capture their attention. 
and it also helps you with SEO. So it's gonna help you when people are searching or Googling and if content, the right content is on your website, you'll start to come up organically um, without paying. So the keywords is everything and making sure you're using the right words. The other um, activation around this is identifying the core content pillars. So what are the core content pillars that you wanna talk about? So for example, with my business, I look at, all right, I'm a marketing company. There's a lot of marketing companies, but really, where are my areas that I really lean into? It's around strategy, it's around creative activation, it's around connecting with targeted audiences, like that's what I lean into. And then it's, and then within that, it's around um, promoting your products and services, reaching diverse consumers. Like that's where I like lean into. And so I, as I'm building out content and I'm thinking about what am I gonna post on social or my LinkedIn, which I have to do, <laughs> um, but you know what I'm gonna post on my in my content strategy on LinkedIn I'm thinking about what are those things that I need to say that connects to who I'm trying to reach that promotes my services and that's gonna make a company say you know what oh yeah I'm a global company and I am having a hard time selling this product to this this consumer oh maybe I do my maybe I do maybe I need another perspective to come in and help me with some strategy so that's like my thought around what you're posting and what you're saying, somebody's watching. And so how do you get them to say, oh yeah, I need that, right? Um, so, but you have to have your content pillar set, so you know. And then you also wanna prioritize quality over quantity, right? It, with all the different content that's constantly being pushed out, you don't have to post 50,000 times a day, right? Like nobody wants to see that, but the quality content that you're pushing. So I don't know, is anybody subscribed to HubSpot? Do you get their emails? So HubSpot is amazing because I don't know if they segment their audience, but all the content they send me is saved in my learn and grow folder in my email <laughs> because it's so good, right? And they're very targeted and what they're what they're sending is relevant content that I'm gonna that I need. And I've been exploring, oh yeah, I probably need to get a HubSpot account for my business. And so, but with that, I've been looking. Do I do HubSpot or do I do high qual high level? You know, so I'm exploring options, right? And so those are things that if you keep pushing, if you're pushing quality content, it's going to make consumers or your audiences that you're going after think, hmm, maybe I need to read what they're sending, even if they're not at a point right, ready to like purchase what you have. So quality over quantity is everything. And then um, you wanna have a regular posting schedule. So whether you're doing Monday, to, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you know, you, you watch, like especially on social, as you're watching to see when is the best times that you have engagement, Pay attention to that and look to see when is the best time to post. How often do I do a blog post? So like on your website, creating a blog post is relevant to what you do, but it's giving advice to a consumer or a customer um, will help them want to keep coming back to your website. And if they know every month at the beginning of the month, I'm probably going to see a new blog. They're going to want to come back. So it's just getting people in a habit of knowing that I can get quality content beyond you selling me something. If you do IT, I can learn about IT, about what, what's, what's trending in IT or what do I need to know, you know, um, as it relates to my business when it comes to IT, I know that I can come to your website and get content even if I'm not using your service yet. So that's just warming up the customer. And it, it, and it helps with the, and one great thing about that is you can post it on multiple places. So if you got a blog on your website, you can post it on social and it just gets people in that habit. Um, go to market. So leveraging media so when you go to when you go to market like right now there's so many different options of how you can go to market and how you can promote but really leaning into questions around what marketing channels are right for your business just because people on TikTok doesn't mean that's where your business needs to be right <laughs> that's not that may not be where your audience is um so thinking about what are the right channels for your business also how can you leverage digital marketing social um, partnerships and more. So as you're looking at, I need to know where my customers are, but also how can I leverage these channels to help me grow? Those are things that you, those are questions you wanna ask yourself as you're building out your go-to-market plan. Also, you wanna think about how often do you communicate? Again, like if I'm using all these different channels and I'm posting, how often do I need to be communicating? Which goes back to what's your content plan? What's your content schedule? So you start to know this is, this is what I'm gonna communicate and how often. So here's some activations to consider around that. So when you get to the go-to-market stage, it's, it's really just about how do we get out there, 
Like, how do we push? So you've done, done your market research. You know who your customer is. You know what messages are going to probably connect with them because you've done your research. Um, you know who your competitors are and how you stand out. And now you're ready to go. You're ready to tell everybody or are you ready to promote and push and go a little bit harder than maybe what you're doing now? So then you have to consider where your audience might be spending their time. Is it on social media? So we got the social media platforms. Are they on Facebook? Depending on the age group of your audience, they may still be on Facebook, right? If you're like 80s baby, you're on Facebook because you were around when it first came out, right? <laughs> so you're still there. You haven't given it up yet. But you know, if they're younger, they may be on Instagram or TikTok. But it just depends on who you're trying to reach. And then if you're if you're B2B, you're really looking for the people on LinkedIn. And even within that, it's like, how do you be effective on LinkedIn so you're not just spamming people with the in-mail notes that I'm sure we all get? <laughs> um, and they kind of get really crafty on how they do that, too, where they make you think you know them. And then you're like, hey, do I know you? <laughs> no, I don't know you. You're trying to sell me something. <laughs> but, <laughs> you wanna, you know, but you want to think about where are they at and how do you reach them? Also, um, search engines. So you want to know, like, maybe it's you're trying to reach people that you know are searching for your your services that you're offering. So how are you leveraging Google, Google Ads, pay ads, things like that? Um, email marketing. How are you, the, you know, I've seen some really great email marketing campaigns. And when people do drip campaigns where they're watching to see what you're responding to, what you're clicking clicking on, and then they're sending you another email follow-up to get engagement, you can, use, you can leverage that, um, especially if you have a list of customers or... You know, you have followers. That's a great way to engage. Um, and then, like, your overall content marketing. So, again, are you doing blogs? Are you doing PR? Maybe you want to start a YouTube channel. You know, YouTube is great. Like, uh, how many people go to YouTube to go get information when they're looking for resources? A lot. Like, a lot, right? Um, so, that's an opportunity. And, again, it's, and you know, and when you think about even, like, something like YouTube, or a blog, it's not about selling your service, but it's selling your expertise. How are you selling your expertise that makes someone say, I need to work with you because you know what you're talking about? Um, and then the offline channels, right? Because we can't give that up. Even though we're in a digital world, like you need to be in public, like you need to be at certain events or especially here, you know, we're in West Michigan and West Michigan is all about who you know. It's all about connecting. It's all about meeting people. And a lot of times you're gonna get business just off of who you know way more than you'll get from posting on social media, right? If you're trying to do business in West Michigan, right? And, and you're looking to do B2B. So where do you show up matters. Also, the way that you diversify your marketing and promotion tactics. So I think this is where you start to, again, lean into who's your audience and what mix makes the most sense. So is it short images? Is it um, concise text, long text? If I'm doing long form content, is it the blog is where I'm doing long form. If it's, you know, my digital ads, is it short and to the point that's going to make people say, yep, I need to click on that. So being very thoughtful about how you're, how you're messaging and then consistency across the brands, right? So if I'm on Facebook and then I'm on LinkedIn and then I go to Google and you pop up, like you should look the same across wherever you're at, right? It should be consistent and have a strong brand look and feel. That matters. Um, and then tailoring your message. So I think that is something that's a big deal. Cause again, it's not about reaching everybody. It's about reaching the people who want what you're selling, right? And finding that co those, those group of individuals and growing that out. Cause it's a lot of people that want what you're selling, even if it's not the masses. And so how do you get to those people? And that's where you start to get tailored in your marketing message. What message, and that's really where the, the planning comes in. When you're building out your content plan, you're looking at your customers, you're thinking about the message that you need to send to them and then you're building out the tactics, you could actually have multiple plans under one big plan that's focused on the different audiences that you're trying to reach. And so it really comes down to how you're writing it out, like writing it out so that it, it'll help you start to see the big plan. Um, and then analyzing and tracking. Everything that we do on marketing don't work. <laughs> you know, you may spend a lot of money and be like, man, that didn't work. <laughs> And it's okay, but it's like, how do you learn from it? How do you adjust it? How do you, how, how far do you let a, a campaign go before you jump in and say, oh, we need to tweak this, right? Um, at what point do you need to make that decision? So tracking and, and watching and monitoring does matter um, when you're doing your activations around your go-to-market. Okay, so here's the machine. So this is what I love because so many times, you know, you I, I hear people say, 
I want to reach a lot of people. I want to get a lot of customers. And I just want to promote and run ads on social. Like, that's what I want to do. Like, okay. So understanding um, what does that marketing sales funnel look like and what happens when you're like, you know, what's going to possibly happen um, based off the activation that you're doing because it because it because what happens is based off of where that where is it at in the marketing sales funnel. So um, when you look at the marketing sales funnel, it comes down to what does that process look like to get somebody from becoming um, someone that just heard about your brand to a customer and client. How do you lead them through this journey? Um, how will you attract them? And how will you engage and convert them? Because the name of the game when you're building your business is conversion at the end of the day. We need to convert, right? So, here's what I use for fun. <laughs> but, I mean, I customize it. But this is everything, right? And this is a lot of this is like, this is what we did. I worked at Amway and I launched a lot of their big skincare and I was what I did their um, marketing branding for artistry so I launched really big skincare and makeup product line and so it we had big budgets big marketing budgets and it all came down to the sales funnel of how are we going to get them from awareness to loyalty and what tactics are we going to use within that right it doesn't matter how large or small you are this funnel is everything so when you're looking at from awareness to loyalty when you get when you're at the awareness part it's all that's where you start to do the targeted social media campaigns it's the paid seo it's getting people out there it's the repetition of people hearing about your company what you're offering what you do it's the partnering with like if you're selling a product that's like a consumer-based product it's working with an influencer or a content creator that's where you start to do those things it's the the blogs the emails the short testimonials and what happens at that awareness is you're at the pre-journey. So you're at the journey of just getting people to know that you exist. And then it's also the place where you start to trigger them to know, oh, this company exists and hmm, they're selling something that may be of interest to me, right? So you're pushing out content that's very strategic that's gonna help to grow your awareness. Where people get it mixed up at is at this awareness stage, you're not necessarily gonna get conversion. It, 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 most times you're not right unless you have a product that is something that's easy to purchase it's good price point and it's something that i know i need right so if i see a product and I, it's lipstick right i like beauty it's lipstick and i see it on instagram i don't have to go it's not gonna take me long to get through the the sales funnel because yep i want that it's cute like bam right but if you're selling to me a new it system that's going to change my life for my business and it costs money that's like a little bit different, right? Because I gotta, it's gonna take it's gonna take me a while to get through that channel, right? So you start with awareness, and then it's the consideration. So there's different tactics that happen in the consideration stage, but that's really where they start to discover more about your brand. And that's you know, a lot of times people use social media because that's the easiest way to get to people. But it's the social media, it's the pop-up experiences, it's you going to the networking events, passing out your cards, talking to people. It's the, um, if you have a product where people can try it before you buy it or some type of offer you can give, or, you know, even with, you know, um, tools and technology, like the try it before you buy it is really good because people will test it out before they use it, right? So that's where you get them in the discovery phase to consider being a client. Then it's the evaluation. So the evaluation is a big deal because um, it's where, they're going to your website. So they, they saw this product, they're gonna to go to your website to learn more, and then they're gonna get into the testimonials, right? They wanna know what are people saying about this product because if I'm gonna invest money, I wanna know, does this work? How does this help you? And we all do it. Like, all of us in here review <laughs> and check out ratings, and you know, it's just what we do, right? It's our buyer behavior. So it's how do you evaluate? We, we read social media content, and so, so in that research phase is where people are starting to Say, yeah, maybe I, maybe I want to use you. And I would say if you're a startup and you don't have a lot of testimonials, it's okay. Like it's, it's okay if you don't have a lot, but even if you have a couple or even if you have family and friends that can, you know, do some reviews for you, like see, or even if you're, if you're selling a service and it's something that people can use and test out just so that you can get reviews, I would try to be creative in that because it will help you, um, you know, be able to help people when they're at the evaluation phase of the funnel. And then it's the conversion. So how do you get them to buy? So they, they're aware, they saw testimonials, you know, they're triggered by what you're offering, and then they're ready to convert. 
And so that's really where you start to see the discounts, you start to see challenges, you start to see um, promotions. That's where that starts to happen, right? Or you start to see the coupons like buy today and you get the $300 off or whatever, try it for 90 days or however, right? But that is really like where they we start to see the conversion. And then it's the loyalty. The loyalty is really what it's great because that's where you start to get those brand ambassadors. You want people telling other people about your product or your service or your offering because that's how you grow your client base, right? The more people that are talking about you, the more people are saying that you're awesome. Um, that That's really where you start to build up your clientele. And some of the best marketing that you can get is if you didn't have to post a post and somebody knows about you when they're telling somebody about you. It's great, especially if you service-based because that means that you can be competitive in your pricing of what you're offering. You know that they see the value in what you're offering and um, it's not as much work, right? So, but in the loyalty stage, that's where you, you know, you have brand ambassadors, you have people that maybe you might do Q&A sessions with people that are trusted or recognized where or that's experts in their field um, that other people would, would be into hearing what they have to say. That's when you start to do emails because if, if this is happening the right way, you're gonna start to capture emails. So you're capturing emails so then you can start to connect with people and start sending them information that's relevant, not just selling your product, but information that shows your expertise in whatever it is that you do. And then community. Community is everything and you know, in the beginning, like when you think about community, it used to be like, oh, we all like to work out or we all like, you know, some certain kind of product and so we're community. But community is just continuing to evolve. You know, you see communities in IT where people are like passionate about like, what's the next thing happening with ChatGPT? And you got a whole group, right? Of people talking about this. And then you got people within that group saying, oh, this is what I'm offering or this is what I'm doing, right? And so it's like, how do you start to build community of people where you become a go-to expert in your field you um, become a place where people want to come to learn more about whatever it is that you're selling and offering. And so how do you cultivate the people that are interested in your brand to start to become a part of your community? And then that also helps with the referral. And then partnerships. So those are things that you want to think about, like who should I be collaborating with? Who, who is doing work that's complementary to what I'm doing that we should be collaborating with? And if we partner together, we're bigger and better, right? You know, how, like, how, what does that look like? Uh, most recently, like example that I did that, um, I don't know if you guys know who Gallego is from WZZM. She was a reporter in Grand Rapids on the news forever. And she left media and she was like, oh, I'm doing freelance work. And I was like, oh, Belle is a storyteller. Belle is good at taking stories and authentically like connecting with people. Hey, Belle, you want to do some partnership? And she was like, yeah, let's do it, right? And so, you know, and so now I'm leveraging that talent because I see her as a benefit of like when I'm helping clients while building their brand story, Belle can help me do the stories that are newsworthy and media worthy because that's what she brings to the table. So see who's like not a competitor but a complimentary partner. Um, okay, so yeah, so those are, so that's that before I get into just some um, tactics. So any questions just about like the marketing strategy, how do you build your plan out and everything that I'm walking you through, this really start, this really should be like in a plan. So like as you're building out, what is your marketing strategy before just jumping into doing all these tactics and build your strategy and let all of your marketing be centered around the strategy. And then that, and then you're able to track it and, and know where you're investing your dollars, right? Cause you know, as entrepreneurs really have so much, right? To invest in our marketing efforts. So how do we be strategic? Any questions about the plans or comments or thoughts? Are any, is anybody doing some of this now in your business and seeing success in it? <laughs> a little bit, yeah. We we'll started with our website, and then actually, um, we do a lot of presentations mm -hmm. uh, over the internet, webinars. We actually invite a virtually a customer in mm -hmm. on the big screen mm -hmm. and go through uh, our organization history, what we do, how long we've been doing it, mm -hmm. what we're good at, mm -hmm. and start the conversation there. Mm -hmm. I think with COVID and everything, mm -hmm. everyone's kind of you know, pandemic's over, but mm -hmm. sort of not over. Right. Right. Everybody wants to work remote. Mm -hmm. It's cheaper, faster, easier. Mm -hmm. So we start the conversation there and then bring them in to our organization to see if there's a fit. Mm -hmm. So are we using some of this? Yes, mm -hmm. the awareness piece, mm -hmm. uh, consideration. Mm -hmm. Still working on conversion and loyalty though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. 
That's a tough part. Yeah, it is a tough part. It is, and it, it, sometimes it takes time because it really just depends on what you're selling and the price point is, is everything. Anybody else doing this where you're seeing some results? I'm not yet. <clears throat> I'm just getting started, but I really, when you said awareness does not necessarily equal conversion, I was like, oh, yeah, because I think, you know, my coach is like, well, just get out there and do these things, and it's like, okay, and, you know, I liked how you put those two other phases in there to mm -hmm. just, I'm not a marketing person mm -hmm. either, right, mm -hmm. so maybe it's obvious to other people in the room, mm -hmm. but that really was Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a really big misconception with a lot of entrepreneurs is that awareness equals conversion. And it's hard to wrap your mind around mm -hmm. it, you know, because they're like, wait, if we just keep doing these things, it's going to happen. And it's like, yeah, depending on what you're selling, and it's all about the price point. Like, it, it doesn't necessarily happen that quick. So, yeah, no, that's a good point. But it's good, though, because when you know the full journey, it, you, you know where to dig in a little bit deeper. Like, okay, I'm doing the awareness part, but... Here are some areas that I probably could be um, come up with some different ways of how do I like get them to that conversion piece. And so, yeah. I have a question yeah. for you. Uh -huh. I have a few clients who have provided testimonials. Mm -hmm. Short, sweet. Mm -hmm. um, I've added one to the signature line of my email mm -hmm. so that anyone that emails me gets mm -hmm. that back yeah. as well as a link to my website. Mm -hmm. I've also used both of them in my email marketing um, just to say this is what people are saying about me. And it's mm -hmm. not comfortable, I don't mm -hmm. like it, but mm -hmm. I felt like people should hear what other people are saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What else could I do with that, mm -hmm. with those testimonials? I think um, one idea is use it on leverage it on LinkedIn. So if you have, um, one, you can just do the post of like what your customers are saying, and you can position it as, you know, I'm excited to work with X, you know, thank you, you know, for the opportunity, check it, here's what she had to say or who he had to say. Another opportunity is you could do an interview with them live, like a little Q&A live on LinkedIn mm -hmm. and do it around lunchtime and do it, like I always say, do like 12 to one, between like the 11 to one o'clock time frame on LinkedIn and talk to somebody and just have them talk about their experience with you and, and, and how it's impacted their business. Because people, even if they don't watch it right there, they may come back and watch it. And keep it, you know, just kind of keep it short, you know, 15 minutes or so. Is that mm -hmm. a uh, video? Yeah, so you could go live. Yeah, but but here's the thing. So there's a tool you can use. So say you want to do a live interview and maybe you want to pre-record it and just post it. You can use, um, it's called StreamYard. And it's this cool tool. A lot of people started using it during COVID uh, when they were going live. But it's like you can brand the interview it's a whole back end system. It's super cheap, and you can interview people, and you can record it, or you can go live and do it that way. And so that that's a that's a good way. But I think just those. I think testimonials are just so critical because people purchase based off of recommendations. And so if you have that and you can leverage it, I will use it. Or even if you like did a video testimonial and you just shared it and say like you know hey this is what somebody said thanks. You know, thanks so and so. Because a lot of times, like, you know, what I've found is people will say, Oh, you're working with so and so? Oh, you're working with and then I'm like, Oh yeah, they don't know what level we're working at, but I'm working with them, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And so and that's that's marketing, right? To say, Oh yeah, yeah. Can I put that on Facebook? Yeah, you can put it on Facebook too. Yep. You wouldn't put a fifteen minute video though. No, you could do like a clip. So I would do like, so I'm gonna show you a tool that you can use like a clip. You could do a little clip of like the most impactful comment in that conversation. Put the video on your website, put the comment in a little short one minute or less little clip on your um, social media and then direct people to go watch more. Yeah, because people are not gonna read a whole. But like I do see, I think that's where LinkedIn is different because I see it all the time where, especially like media publications, like they'll have like a whole interview, but it's with people who are interesting. So, you know, people will watch it, you know. Um, so, yeah. But I think like it's all about the content. If it's interesting, people will watch it or they'll come back to it. All right. So I want to give you some tools. So I just want to give you some trends that you should look for and think about like um, 2023, 2024 marketing trends. So authentic, scrappy content for social is where it's at. Like people want real. They want behind the scenes. Like if you are... Because I'm talking, I know this is like kind of like, you know, IT focus group. 
if you are, um, you could talk about behind the scenes of what you're building or what you're doing or what's happening and just show some of that authentic content or just, you know, do a little post about, oh, we're working today. Oh, yeah, we're at search today, you know, working on our next strategy. People are watching and they're looking and then they'll, they may reach out and say, tell me more about what you got going on. People want the real content. Also, like if you are selling like a consumer product, um, you know, showing like, oh, I'm making this, I'm making or we're doing this or this is what's coming up next. People like that. They like the real. So look for opportunities to do that and be strategic though and make sure that what you're posting is speaking to how it is addressing a customer's needs or pain points. Like try to leverage that in there, right? Because then people connect the dots like, oh, he or she is doing something that I need. The other one is showcase your brand value on social media to expand your reach. So again, you want to show like what is your brand doing? Why your brand rocks? Like look for opportunities to be creative to talk about your brand. And then also that's where it comes with the whole look and feel too. You wanna make sure that your brand like looks cohesive. So as you're talking about it, it's a reflection of like what you offer. Um, one other new trend or trend, it's not new, but it's growing is embrace inclusive marketing and sustainable practices. Consumers want to see themselves reflected in your brand. Right? They want to see people that look like them. They And it's not just about race, it's gender, it's, you know, uh, age, all that, right? People want to see themselves represented in your brand. So think about how you can be inclusive in the way that you're marketing. Because the, mar the, the market share is wide, right? And you don't want to miss out on opportunities because people feel left out, right? And within, like, a demographic. Um, also, uh, people want to know, like, so... Uh, social responsibility is everything. People want to know what your brand stands for. They care about your ethics. They care about, you know, if you're doing things as a brand like cause marketing campaigns or if you're giving a charity or if you're doing that, those are things that people care about. And they will invest in that. And especially when you're looking to target millennials or like Gen Z or younger people, they care about the cause of like the work that you're doing, but you're just more than a brand. Um, Another trend is um, UGC content, which we already talked about, but people trust what other people say. So you want to continue to generate UGC content and figure out how you can get more promotion around that because that's an easy sell. And then also explore technology and research. And research, y'all, you guys explore. Tech, uh, you know, you care about technology um, by being here. But I think look at ways of how do you leverage technology to be innovative, and how do you use that as a part of like your marketing campaign and your marketing effort. Um, like one thing, one, one thing around the technology is, so, you know, um, a lot of people like to use like influencers or content creators or things like that. Something that's, in, um, that's, is growing is virtual influencers. So it's kind of like that whole metaverse, um, idea where it's not even like real people, but <laughs> people are into that. Right. And so it's looking at like, how do you be, how do you stay up to date on what's happening in technology as it relates to marketing and how do you infuse that in what you're doing? Lastly, just some tools. So I want to share some tools that I think are helpful um, and they're inexpensive. So we talked about SEO and making sure your keywords are on point. There's a tool called SCR Ranking. And what this does is it helps make it a little bit easier to track your ranking. It helps with your keywords and it helps you to do research to help your, um, you, your company rise to the top. So it helps with search engine. So this is a tool that you can use that can, that can help you. TubeBuddy. If you have a YouTube channel, then TubeBuddy is mandatory because it'll help you with key search, key, keyword research. It helps you with testing titles and thumbnails and seeing what's working and what, what can attract clients and customers. And it'll help you grow your channel. And I think, you know, with YouTube, it's like TV. People are going to YouTube before they watch TV, right? So if you are comfortable being on camera and you're comfortable talking about your industry and what your, your knowledge and your skill and there are people who want what you're talking about they're out there and they're searching for you on youtube so go for it and like i think you should do it because people are skipping tv honestly just to go watch tv on youtube so that that's, that's something i would do if you don't like my being in front of the camera when it comes to um videos we were talking about how do you take a video and make it shorter there's a um app called clip script and this turns your videos into social media asset and it'll help you add titles and captions and music quick and easy. So this is something that people use. And there's other ones out there as well that you can use. Um, 
that make it really easy to create those little clips to get people. And then I'm sure everybody knows about Canva, but Canva's great. More people are using it um, and it's allowing you to be the designer. So definitely get Canva if you don't have a graphic designer and you need that. Um, and then the other tools, like I am a big uh, supporter of ChatGPT. I love it, I think it's great. And especially when you know how to do prompt engineering, it's everything. Like it has, especially as a business owner in general, it has helped me just have a virtual assistant without having a real person, right? <laughs> it's everything. Mm -hmm. And so I think like you can really leverage ChatGPT for your content creation and being able to have targeted prompting and know how to prompt, like that will help you get some really strong content. And then lastly, um, newsletter campaign. So MailChimp is good, Klaviyo. Klaviyo is good because you can connect it to um, other sales, like Salesforce and other, um, what is it? Um, Shopify, like you can, like if you're selling something, you can connect Clavio to other things. And it also does a lot of good um, automation. MailChimp does too. So I think like if you're using email marketing to connect with customers, there is a lot of opportunity to really be more strategic in how you're approaching it with automation. And so I would dig into that. And like go on YouTube, there's like videos around that too of like how do you leverage automation with um, newsletter campaigns. That's a good one as well. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I know it's a lot of content, it's a lot of sharing, but these are just some, again, some things that I found to be successful in building um, winning marketing strategies. Any questions? Any other questions? How do you, um, how are you leveraging chat GPT? Like you said, as an assistant, but like specifically, what are some things that you use that for? I, do. Um, I use it for um, email. So when I got to draft up an email to a client, I will, I'll write it up and I will drop it in and tell chat to proof it. Sometimes I'm just very direct and say, chat, I need a very thoughtful email that has X, Y, and Z, da, 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 da. And then I'll have them write it. And I think, I don't know if this is technology, but I feel like it's starting to understand my voice because what I'm getting is better than- Sounding more and more like you. Sounding more and more like me. And I'm yeah. like, this is good content. And the other um, thing that I do, so my little process is I do that and then I take it and put it in Grammarly. And then in Grammarly, like I use that to proof everything and make sure it sounds right. And then I'm like, there you go. <laughs> so I do that a lot. Like I do that, um, I, I do that with a lot of content that I create. It's, and I and I do it also like for client things too. Like if I'm just, like if a client needs something that they're like, hey, like I just recently did it for a client. So um, I work with um, Ann Arbor Spark. And so I help a lot of businesses on the east side of the state and somebody needed a blog and I was like, oh, okay. So I like put in all the information about their company, dropped it in chat, it wrote me a blog and then I proofed it and edited it and made sure. And then I'm like, there you go. And she said, oh, it's amazing. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, but it's, you know, but I think it's just like from a content creation standpoint, that's how I will leverage it. But I will say, do not just take it what they do. Always run it in Grammarly or always like double check it because sometimes it'd be it's weird stuff getting there. To add to yeah. that, like the Instagram, yeah, it's really helpful for if you like say I need ten Instagram post mm -hmm. ideas and you put in the right information mm -hmm. for you yeah. to like that prompt engineer mm -hmm. and it'll come up with those for you and then it also can help you write captions to go along with that. Mm -hmm. Okay. You just have to work with it for a while to get to know your company and all those yeah. things, and it makes it go a lot quicker when you're trying to get regular content. Yeah, yeah and it, it can help you develop really good hashtags too. Like mm -hmm. on, on okay. Social. Yeah, it helps really good. I've used it too to help um, outline a presentation. I was okay. doing, and I needed some inspiration. Yeah, you know, I tweaked it after that, but at least it got Get the you started. juices flowing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? So, yeah, it I definitely like gets it. the juices going. It's yeah. it's one of my favorite tools. It, it was sometimes like like with social, like I use it for social too when I'm like have to hurry up and whip up content. Sometimes it gives you long, so like talk to it like you would talk to a person, mm -hmm. and I'll say, nope, this is too long. Make it shorter. Make it more snappy. Whatever, and then it'll mm -hmm. go and fix it. Okay. So talk to it okay. like you're literally talking to a real person, and okay. it'll yeah. <laughs> um, any other questions or thoughts, comments? Awesome. Is there any way to get like a, a template of how to lay out a marketing plan? Mm -hmm. Yep, I can create one and send one over for you. Okay. Yep, and just build out the, the different things. And I also have something um, 
I can send you over um, how to profile your customer. I have a worksheet that I give to clients, and so I can send that to you guys too, just so you have that. Yeah, I could. So I don't have, if you didn't register and I don't have your email address and you want anything, just make sure you give that to me before you go. Mm -hmm. Yep. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Also, if, if you are interested in chat GPT or anything AI, we do surge AI talk here on a monthly basis. Um, it's usually the second Tuesday morning. Ben has been one of our star performers there. <laughs> we do a lot of demonstrations and